Hey everybody, I'm Sam Webb and this is Shopify Dev Tips. Today we'll be talking about arrays in Liquid. So I want to start off by explaining what an array is. An array is a bunch of items that are grouped together. Now usually you'd want to use items that are similar, but you could use whatever you want. And to show what an array looks like, we're going to jump into JavaScript for a second because it's a little easier to show it there. So what an array looks like is going to be two brackets, and then you're going to have items within those brackets that are separated by comma. And those could be any type. So we could have numbers, say one, two, three, four, and that would be an array, or you could have strings, right? So Sam, uh, Mike, and Chris and that would be another version of an array uh, another way that you could think of an array is an ordered list right so you've got this this first thing that will always be in this first position you've got this second thing that will always be in the second position you've got this third thing that will always be in the third position right the order of the items inside of an array is static unless you were to remove something from the array or you know modify the array in some way now going back to liquid Arrays are a similar concept, and you, and you mostly see this when interacting with some of the different resources, their objects. So if we go to the product documentation, we'll see something like product.collections. And product.collections returns an array right, of all the collections that are associated with that product or that that product belongs to. We've also got product.images, another array, product.media, which is a different type of array. It's a, an array that has mixed types, right? So you have images and you also have videos in there. And if you were to go through the product object or any other object, you'll see a bunch more like product.options, uh, product.options by name, product.tags, product.variants, right? All these different arrays that have uh, a specific type of item inside of them. So on the front end, how do we use this? So I've already created this, this uh, product object, and there are a few ways to interact with an array, right? So uh, the, most, the first one and the one that you'll see the most is going to be a for loop, for variant in product.variance. And so this loop basically uh, takes every item in the array and loops over them. So it's gonna, it's gonna look at each one once, and it's gonna run whatever's in that code for every single one. So what we want to do is just add an h2 here that has variant.title. And we'll see we've got small, medium, and large here. Now, like I said, most objects have uh, different properties on them that are arrays of other items. And so seeing this, you might think that you could make arrays in a similar way or that contain that type of data. But the truth is, Shopify is actually very limited in how arrays can be created. Right? So if you remember back to the JavaScript example, I was able to just do an array like by making these brackets and then uh, putting some, uh, some items in there. So Sam, Mike, and Chris. Right? And you might think you could do something like assign names equals that, right? And then be able to for name and names. Let's do another H2 and say name. But this is actually not uh, possible. And the reason is because Shopify doesn't provide a way to directly create arrays in Liquid. The only way would be from strings. And so I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to make a string. It's going to be called names string. With a string, the only way that we can make an array is by using the split method on it. So I'm gonna make another variable equals names string, and we're gonna run a filter. So we put this pipe for a filter, and we're gonna run split, and we're gonna split it on the comma. Now you'll see that this is going to work. So we've got Sam, Mike, and Chris listed out. And really, to tidy this up, I could get rid of uh, this, and I could do the split here and get rid of that second one you'll see it has the same thing there 
So you might be asking yourself, why would I ever need to make my own arrays? So let's run through a quick example. Let's say your business has five locations, right? And you want to display those locations on the site. So let me quickly set up some code for that. Okay, so here's the example, right? So we've got this kind of, uh, this kind of array within an array type of setup, right? So we've got this first array called locations where we split on commas. So uh, the first item is gonna be San Diego Pipe Fifth Avenue. The second one's gonna be New York Pipe Wall Street, right? So we've got these, uh, right? So we've got these locations and each location is a city and the street that it's located on. So then down here, we loop over those locations and then within that, we take that specific location and then we do another split on that pipe, right? So in this case, we're taking, let's say San Diego, right? And we're saying, okay, split on this pipe to make an array out of that, right? And so then we do that split and then we say, uh, we make a div with, that's called location. And in there we have a, a sentence that says, you can find us in split location first, which will be San Diego, which is the first item in the array. And then uh, on split location last, which would be the street or the, and last is the filter to get the last item in the array. Using these first and last filters are pretty useful on arrays if you, you know, specifically want to grab the first one or the last item in that array. And if we look at that on the front end, we'll see you can find us in San Diego on Fifth Avenue or you can find us in New York on Wall Street and the same thing for the rest of the cities and streets. So that was a basic introduction into arrays. Hope you found that information useful. If you did, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.